Hi all. Today we're going to learn how to paint on fabric. What a wonderful thing. So we're going to paint these flowers on a t-shirt. I have it folded so that it's easier for you to say. Just a couple of things that went on before I did this. I took this piece and I have, it's a t-shirt, you can see, it's a t-shirt. I put cardboard underneath it, in between, and I put a piece of wax paper. You can use any cardboard, you can use wax paper. What that does is when you're painting, the paint will go through to the back of the shirt. And what happens is if you have nothing there, it'll paint onto the back of the shirt. Then what I did is I clipped. I just took whatever kind of clips these are. I took these clips and I just, let me turn this over. I clipped the back so that it's not flopping all over. Okay, so that when I'm moving like this, it's not an issue. Okay, now to put my pattern on, I took a sulky pen. They also make, it's called Marvy. Can you see that? Oh, let me put this way. A Marvy pen. They're heat transfer pens. So what happens is, is you just trace on the back, put it down, take an iron and iron it on. So your pattern will come out. Then when you base coat, you'll have, you, you'll still see your lines. Okay. So sometimes I base coat it a little bit. We'll just quickly put that in. Now, the reason I base coat is because, can you see how there's still spots that are not covered? Like here, like here. What that's from is because you didn't do a ton of paint. But our initial base coat is to get the paint into the fibers of the fabric. And then, once you do that, you're ready to paint. Now, you can paint on anything. You can paint on a jean jacket, you can paint on a pillow, you can paint on a pillowcase, you can paint on jeans. I think I'm going to put tulips up the side of my jeans. Fabric painting is making a huge comeback. You can use it for your personal wardrobe, you can use it for home decor, you can use it for anything. So on this piece, I'm going to use Deco Art So Soft, which is fabric paint. If you don't have fabric paint, you can use Deco Art makes fabric medium, and you can mix that just with your regular acrylics. What that'll do is that'll make it nice and soft. See, this doesn't bend and crack. Okay. So, and as you can see, I can do this, and it's not doing anything. If you use straight acrylics, you can risk. It doesn't always happen, but you can risk the cracking. All right, the one thing before we start that you have to be really careful of, I probably won't leave this here. The one thing you have to be really careful of is not getting it anywhere else. So if you get it on the outside shirt, it's there. You can, if you scrub it off, you just, I, at least for me, I get it all over. So if I got something here or there, I'd make a butterfly or I'd make a dragonfly or I'd put in some hearts or if I was doing a winter scene, some snowflakes and just incorporate it into the piece. Okay, so I base coated in avocado, I base coated in red pepper, and I base coated in cad orange hue. So when we paint fabric, we're gonna paint wet on wet. And to paint wet on wet, we have to work section by section by section. 
So I'm not going to base coat this whole leaf. I'm going to base coat this section here so that it's wet when I bring in my lights and my darks. Now, my dark, let me just do this. My dark is olive green. I should not be doing this over the shirt, but I am. It's olive green mixed with a little bit of lamp black. My initial base coat, which is what I'm going to use again to base coat, is avocado. So here's my avocado, which is my base coat, and here is my darker color. So when you mix black, and be careful when you mix black, you're only mixing a touch, but you want your values to be different, to be darker. So here's my medium value, here's my dark value. Here, which is green apple, is my light value. So you can see when we're here, we have our mediums, our lights, and our darks. Okay? Our darks are to push things down, just like we paint everything. Dark makes the item recede, light brings the item towards us. So to stop it from being flat, we need to get some color in there. Now, on the bigger area, I'm gonna use a faux squirrel filbert wave. I just love the way it blends my paint. And on the smaller area, I'm just gonna use a black silver flat brush. So when I come in here, this brush is going to just be too big okay so the first thing we do is we're going to pick up our base coat color I'll just move some of this out of the way can you see you can see some of that right i'm going to get it too close now i'm starting on the back leaf because i always work from the back to the front okay so i'll come in and it's a little bit of work. Now, I won't go all the way to the end because it's less work if I don't have to go all the way to the end. I'll pick up some dark on my brush and I'll put it in my dark area. It looks like I'm making a mess, huh? I'm outside the stem because I want the stem to come up. And I'm here where the leaf goes underneath the other leaf. Okay, see that? Now remember, I am constantly wiping on my paper towel. I'm not cleaning so much, but I'm constantly on my paper towel. I'm gonna go where the leaf goes underneath the flower. Okay, and I wipe. And then I'm gonna come in, I'm gonna put that where you can see it. And I'm going to, I'm moving my hand back and I'm blending. And I'm moving my brush just like it's a pendulum. You see that? Now, because the base coat is there and it's wet, I'll lose some of the color. So I'll come in and I'll add some more. And it's a process but you see how I'm starting to get the dark in there? And it's staying. And I'll wipe, and then I'll move my hand back, and I'll lightly swipe. Come outside the stem, and swipe. Now I'm slowly building up that color. All right, and I'm here, and I'm wiping. Now I want to bring in some light. And my light, I just want to bring right here, and I want to just swipe it in. Then I'll come, and you see how I have this line here? I have a very distinct line here and here, where I put the paint in. So now I'll come from here, and I'll just, can you see that? 
Now I'll probably have to go back. Just add a little bit of dark. Now as the base coat, now it's not dry, I'm still working wet on wet. But as it's not as wet, it'll give me, it'll allow me to have a darker color. You see that? So then I'll move on to here. Again, I'm gonna take my avocado and I'm going to go most places. Now, if you base coat the whole thing and then bring your color in, that's fine. It'll just take a little bit longer, which I don't have the time. It'll just take a little bit longer because you'll have to keep blending. So now I'm bringing my dark here because I want to push that down. But you see how it stays dark longer because there's no avocado underneath it. But there's enough avocado that I'm blending into it and I'm not getting a harsh line. Now, just say I'm here and I do this and I don't like it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come in with my mop. The mop looks like this, it's a little fuzzy. And I'm gonna just blend it. See how I just blended that? Okay, that'll help you in blending. This is not wide enough, so I'll just come in. I'll add some more. Now my stem is a little bit unshaped, but we'll fix that when we come in and do the stem. Now remember, we have to go behind the flower because we're pushing the flower down. Okay. I usually rinse between dark and light, otherwise I won't get true color. I want to bring some light in here. Now I don't go everywhere. So I have dark, I have light, and I have medium. So all my medium will be here. I'll bring light right along just here and then I'll blend it in now again if you want to take your mop just come in and blend it now after a while if you're using the mop a lot your mop will get yucky with paint so just clean it on a baby wipe and then just dry it on a paper towel if you put it in water, it gets limp, and you don't want it limp. Now we'll come in, and I'm in the middle here. And I'm putting my base coat of avocado down. I'm going a little bit further than where I want the dark. Now, the dark is going to come against this leaf to separate these two leaves and it's going to come up against this stem to separate the two and bring the stem up and push the leaf down. So I'm going to come in. Because this doesn't take all that long to dry, well it takes long enough to dry. Because it takes long enough to dry, you have workable time. So I don't have to come in and say, oh, I gotta blend right there the whole right away. I can put all my colors in on each section. Don't do all three leaves. But on this leaf, I could put all my darks and all my lights in and then go in and blend. So either way that you're comfortable with, you can do. Okay, I'm wiping. I'm gonna come in. I wanna pull up the edge. I always like to pull up the tips. Then I'll come in and I'll come down the edge. Now the lines that you're seeing like here and outside here that are from the sulky pen, in time they just fade. They don't stay forever. They just go away. 
Now I'm leaving my center avocado so that I have a couple of values of color. So I'm here. Now I'll blend this in. And I can blend it right into the dark, right into the light. And I'll come in and I'll grab some dark and I'm down here in the dark. Adding some more dark. Now, if you can see here, we have a vein here. So I'll come in. I'm on the chisel edge of my brush. I'm just gonna put in my vein, wipe my brush on my paper towel, and lightly swipe. So you see there I have my vein. And then I'm going to switch, and I'll tell you why I go in this order. Because if I'm doing here, then to do my stems, I'm risking putting my hand here, and I don't want to do that. So it's just easier to do my stems. Now, stems are a little bit smaller area. So I'm going to come in, and I'm going to kind of just put some avocado in. Now... I'm going to pick up my dark. I need dark where the flower, where the stem goes into the bulb because it's going under the bulb. So dark there and dark here where it's going under the leaf. Okay, so you can see that. I probably have to put a little bit more in, but okay. Now, now you can look at this stem and say, oh, so pretty. But down in here, you can see that it's going under this leaf, but you really lose that the stem is above both of these leaves. So we have to take a little bit of the green apple on the edge. And I'll bring it up. And on the edge here, on the edge here, and then I'll blend it out. And you see how now it looks like it's above this leaf and this leaf. I might bring some right in the middle, not the whole thing. So what happens is now you can see that this is going under the bulb. This, the stem, is medium value and light value, so it's not a flat stem. This part here looks like it's closer. This here is going under this leaf. And I'll do the same thing. Now you see how I lost the shape of the stem? I'll just, we'll just come in and take it out. So we can just fix it that way. It's a very easy fix. So, whereas you can't get paint, or you can't remove paint, if I get it on the outside shirt, or whatever we're working on, you can come in and paint over it if it's on a painted area. So, and then we'll just brighten right there, we'll wipe, and we'll sweep. Now up here, I need to add just a little bit in here and in here to pull it up. Okay? So now you can see I have a whole bunch of values in there. Okay. So now I'm going to switch back to my other brush. And you see it's just a switch over so that you can fit the brush in the area. So when you're painting, always think of the brush that fits the area. So if you have a smaller area, you'd move to a four flat or a six flat. If you have a bigger area, this is an eight filbert wave, but you could, if you don't have a filbert wave, you can go to a 10 flat you can use filberts. Fabric painting in this technique is very, very forgiving.
So you don't have to have a specific brush. You don't have to have fabric paint. You can use acrylic paints with fabric medium. You can use fabric paint. You can use flat. You can use a filbert wave. Painting on fabric is a lot of fun. And it's making a huge comeback. So always think of what you can do. Think, I paint a lot of pillows. So if I were painting a pillow, I could do something with snowflakes. And you can stencil, so you can do snowflakes. You can do words. And what beautiful gifts they would be if you think of it that way. Now I'm coming in and I'm putting the green apple because this edge is above these leaves. So I have to pull that edge up. And then I can just blend it into the avocado. The tip, again, I'm gonna come from the tip and pull it down. And again, I'm going to do the outside edge with green apple. Now, green apple tends to fade. But we'll fix that when we get to the end. But you can see here, see how much brighter it is? And it's brighter here. So we'll come in and we'll just swipe some in. And see my hands at the back of the brush? And we'll just brighten up some now. Rinse because we're going to dark. Now the base of my leaf is already dark and that's what I want. It would be the same as here. Okay. We'll come in the same way we did the center vein there. We're on our chisel edge. And if you see, veins don't go perfectly straight and they don't go to the tip. They come from the base, and I'm gonna blend it out. Can you see that? So, what we did in our leaves is we started on the back leaf, and we started in the section. We based in avocado. We laid in our darks with olive and a touch of black. We mixed that together to get a darker value of green. And then we put in our lights with green apple. So our lights we swiped in. So now I look at this and I say, oh, got pretty dull. So I may come in and I may just swipe some in. But I'm not doing the whole thing. So you see how that brightens just in the middle? And you can do that. See the difference? All right, then we moved our hand to the back of the brush and we swiped. Our setbacks, our dark makes the item recede, our light brings it towards us. Our dark comes behind the flower, which we're trying to put the leaf behind the flower. Outside of our stem, we're pulling our stem above our leaf because our flower is on top of our leaf. Our stem here and the base here to pull this leaf on top of these. You can always tell when something is on top if it's a full shape. Okay, so this leaf stops because this leaf is on top. Okay, so now we're going to move to flower. Let's see if we can do this. Okay. Let me just pull my colors. My orange flower. My orange flower is based cat orange. And I'll show you the colors in a second. My dark is red pepper. And my light is tangerine. So. My base coat color is cat orange. My dark is cat red. 
and my highlight my lights are tangerine so we'll work section by section now if you look at this flower here put so you can see it this petal here is in the center and it comes up this petal is behind and this petal is behind it's not always that way in a tulip so you'll see when we get to the red it's a little different but in this case you can see this is a top petal because it's a full shape okay so be careful you don't put your hand in the wet I'm trying to do this right side up here so I put my base coat in the center now the base you want to push down and I want to push down against the top petal because this red will push this down underneath this. See that there? And then I'll come in, same thing, and I'll give it a nice swipe. Now, if you want it darker, that doesn't look too dark, does it? You can take a little bit of black and mix it with the red pepper, which is what we'll also use for the red. But I don't want it as dark as if you were doing the red. So I mix just a little bit of black in with the red because it's not as dark as I want it to be and you'll just come in and it looks pretty dark there but it won't in a minute as soon as you blend it out it'll blend into the orange remember the color you see on your palette doesn't necessarily end up being the color you see here because you have your base coat there so you're blending into your base coat. If we were using that color on the raw fabric with no base coat, it would be that color. So we'll take some tangerine on the outside edge because we want to make that brighter. Wipe. Move to the back of the brush. And swipe. Okay, so I'm nice and blended. I've got my darks, I've got my lights, and I've pushed it down. So I'm gonna come in and I'm gonna repeat. Well, you know what, let's move to a smaller brush so you can see how to do it with just a flat brush. Just in case you don't have the other brush. And then I'll do the smaller petals here with the flat brush. So it's the same thing. I have a flat brush. Move over here so you can see. And I just have a bit of paint on just to get it in there. I'm gonna have a nice opaque coverage when I do that. Okay, I'm gonna come up from the base. And I just started with the darker of the two colors. I took a little bit of red pepper and a little tiny bit of black. Now you see the difference between this dark color and it here because I put the orange underneath it. I'm moving back and I'm just blending it out. I'm wiping, picking up tangerine. I pull tangerine from the tip. Oops, sorry, and down the side. And blending. You get a nice variation of colors in there. You see that? All right. Now I'm just going to pop back to the other brush. I'm going to pop back to the other brush because it's bigger and it's a bigger area. You don't have to pop to a bigger brush or you could pop to a bigger flat brush or a filbert. Okay, now Remember, dark makes the item recede, light makes the item come towards us. So if we're pulling this petal up 
from both of these, we're going to come down this edge and down this edge. You see it here? This edge and this edge. So that brings this above these. All right, the base of the petal is always dark because we're pushing it down. So we're here. So you notice I put it in in the shape of the petal. So I'm not straight across, I'm going with the shape of the petal and then I'm gonna stroke up. Now I find it easier to pull towards me. So if I was painting this not on camera, I would be having this upside down and pulling it towards me. So when you paint for yourself, see which way feels more comfortable. You want the brush to feel comfortable. If it's comfortable upside down, pulling it towards you, then do it that way. That's not a right or wrong issue. You can come either way. So I'm here. And I'm down here. I don't like that right there. So you see how I have this dark right here? Just come in there and more light. And I'm swiping. Can you see how pretty that looks? Now if I want a little bit more dark because my light came down too much, I'm just coming from here. I'm just gonna swipe some color up and blend it right in. See how pretty that is? <clears throat> and that's a beautiful tool. Now we'll flip to red. Now, if you look at the red, this is the opposite. The center petal is in the back and these two are coming up. So it's coming this way, okay? So we'll start with the back petal. Now, what we need is red pepper with a little bit of black. Let me mix it and I'll show you the colors. Now this, the original color was red pepper. So my base coat, and I'll put them next to each other so you can see the change in the values. So we have, can you see? This is my mix. It's not as dark as it looks. A lot of red in there. Red pepper, my mix with a little bit of black. I have my cad orange and I'm gonna touch it in tangerine to brighten it, okay? So I'm gonna base coat in red pepper, coming down the middle. Now this is a very back petal, so there's not a lot of light in there. You see the tip? There's very little light there because I don't want to bring it up. I want to keep it in the back. There's a little bit, but there's not a lot. So I'm going to come in and I'm going to base here. And I'm going to pick up some dark and I'm going to come right against the petal that I'm pushing down. I'm on the petal that I want to push down. So I'm right here. I blend a little. And it doesn't have to be straight. It can be, see how I'm curved here? So I'll come in. I'll do the same thing here. Now that got a little sloppy. I think I got a little point there. But remember before how we fixed that stem? We can fix this too. It's easier if you're upside down. And I can do it this way. I'm just telling you that so that you remember that you're watching me do it this way. But if it's more comfortable for you, so now I'm just gonna take some cat orange and I'm gonna swipe a little bit here. If it's more comfortable for you to work upside down, work upside down. 
there's no right or wrong in that. It doesn't matter. So I'm just going to put, you now my orange is fading, but I'm just putting a little bit in. You see that? So now I'll come in and I'll do this petal. It does not matter if you do this petal first or this petal first. It makes no difference. Because one is this one or this one are not on top of each other. They're both on top of this one. So we'll come in and we'll base coat. Now remember, the base of the petal is pulling the flower together. So the base of the petal is dark. And I'm swiping up. You see that? Now I left a little teeny tiny space here. I don't know if you can see it. Right here. And that's where my light's going to go. Now if you put your dark there, the light will go over it. It'll just take a little bit of work. Now I'm taking my cat orange and tipping it in my tangerine. I'll do a little bit at the tip. And I'm going right up against where my dark is. From here. And I'll give it a wiggly shape. I don't want it to be perfectly straight. That's better. And I'm here. And I'm blending. Okay. Now, if it doesn't go into your fibers enough, just get a little more. Okay. Now, because I lost my shape here, I'm going to come in and I'm going to add just tangerine to pop it up so that this whole petal goes right over. You see that? And we'll come down. Now we'll come back and I'll show you how to pump up your colors. Like that. Take that off. And if you don't like it, come in with a clean brush and just take it off. It didn't do what I wanted it to do. So we'll just take that lump out and fix it. Add a little bit more dark. Since I kind of lost that. And push that down. See that? Not pretty. It's my last petal. Base red pepper. Now this one has very distinct curves in it. Base red pepper. Now I'm going more in the center. But I'm getting pretty close so that I have something to blend into. Now remember, I want to pull this edge of the petal off of here, off of the center petal, and I want to pull this edge of the petal off the leaf. So I'm light here and I'm light here for that reason. So I'm going to come in first with my dark, come up from my base, and go and push that right down the center. And I'll come in with my cad orange hue and a little bit of tangerine, both on the same brush. I'm not blending them, I'm just putting them on. And I'm coming up right against my curve, top edge of my petal. And there's my shape, you see that shape? Then I'll come in, I'll move back. And I'll blend it right in. Pick up cat orange hue, blend it from the tip, and come down. And then remember, I said, excuse me, excuse me, we have to pull this edge up off of the leaf. So we want to 
make that a top edge and blend it out. Now we lost a bit of our dark, so we'll come in and we'll swipe some dark back in. But when I swipe the dark back in, I'm leaving my light edges. Does it always work? No. And if it doesn't work, you'll just come in and you'll add some more. So you'll say, I'm just going to bring a little bit more here. You'll say, oh, look, I lost this. And we'll just come in and we'll just add a little bit more. Okay. So you're never married to it until you're totally done and you varnish it or in this case, you don't have to do anything. These new So Softs have, you don't have to heat set them or anything. They just are. Okay, so look at my beautiful flowers. Now I'll look at it. If I look, we're dry. You see that? We're dry. So I might say, well, it's not bright enough or it's not dark enough. So I'll take a dry brush. Now this is a sable dry brush, so it's very soft. And I'll come in and I'll play with my colors. So I picked up a little bit of green apple, the paper towel, and I'll just wipe some off. Now I wiped most of it off. See how I'm down to nothing? I'm working on the side of my brush and I'm gonna bring some light in. Now it'll take a couple of applications. Oop. You don't wanna be that heavy. Let's see, you could just blend it out. Let's see how I just brightened that. Might add a little on this side. And brighten that. I might add a little bit right in the center of the stem. And this gives it a heap load of dimension. Because now I'm only doing some areas where I came in and I blended this whole area in light. I'm only light here and I'm only a little bit of light here. So it's not the same. So now I have my medium, I have my dark, I have my light and I have my highlight, which is in a smaller area. So you see how I'm just coming in, I'm doing just a little bit of an area and what that does is that makes the leaf four dimensional because I have more values of color. See that? So I went from flatter to brighter. This brush, you can you use it dry. If you need to wash, you wash it at the end when you're totally done. So if you have one brush, Take a baby wipe and just get the color out. And this way you can still use it. It's the same with the mop. Okay, take your paper towel and just, I'm not scrub, scrub, scrubbing. I'm light. See that? I'm light. So now I might say, whoop. I need to go lighter. So I'll pick up a little bit of tangerine. Again, wipe. And I'll bring in some tangerine here. See that? So I'm not doing it on the back petals because I don't want them to come up as much as the front petal that better sorry 
in here. And you see, I've already done it three or four times because I want to build it up slowly. But you see how much lighter I am here than I am here? Because this petal is on top. So now same thing here. I'll pick up cat orange and tangerine, wipe some off, and lightly. I do it slowly. It might take me three or four times. Now you could do the same thing with your darks if you need it. We're more than dark enough everywhere. And we'll just bring a little bit in. Now if I just wanted to pop up here, I would just use the cad orange because I don't want it to be as bright and I don't want a lot. Look at how little I used. So what I did is I popped it up. So we went through the leaves. Now I can wash this brush. So we did the leaves. When we did the flowers, we did them wet on wet also. We did, we laid down the cad orange hue. Our dark was red pepper with a tiny bit of black. That's our dark areas. Our light areas were tangerine. So we added tangerine and then we took our brush and we blended. On the red flower, we based red pepper. Our dark was red pepper with a little bit more black. So we had a darker black. This, this is the dark for our, over here. This is the dark for our orange flower. This is the dark for our red flower. See the difference in the values? And then our light was the cat orange and the tangerine. I just picked them both up on the same brush and swept. Then I took my dry brush and your dry brush, I came in with the green apple and popped up my greens and I came in with my lights and I popped up my lights. Now that will depend totally on your piece. You can do you do you can dry brush your darks, you can dry brush your lights. You may not need to dry brush anything. So that's fine too. Now, I don't need a lot of it and I just want to show you what we can do. Our darkest separations here, 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 here. You can come in and float. I use 14 chisel blender, wet blot load blend. Here is our lighter mix. And we'll come in and we'll float just where we want to separate. Now, the one thing I will say, and this is real important, be careful that your brush, the wet part of your brush, doesn't go across to your raw fabric. Because what happens is if your water goes over, so if I'm here and I'm going here, if there's any paint, if it's water, it'll dry. If there's any paint on there, what'll happen is it will give you paint on your shirt and it will not come off. Okay, so here I'm fine. I'll just come here and clean up here. Okay, my leaves, I'll go back to my dark green mix, which is olive green with a teeny tiny bit of black. And I'll separate my stems. See that? But you see how I just pop that? And this is gonna totally depend on your piece. You may not need it. You may say, well, I got my colors right. And that's perfect. You may say, I want it a little lighter, I want it a little darker, right? You know, that's not a right or wrong. 
that's what you see. Now remember, we're pushing our stems down, so I'm okay floating right over them. And here, same thing up here. And I'm floating a little bit in here. And I'll come right there because it's going, the top of my stem is still going under the flower. Now, so now I've just popped all of my dogs. Now, if I, if I want, and I'm doing this solely for your benefit, because I think I'm light enough, but just say I want to be brighter here. And if you see, I'm not coming the whole length, so I went just here, just here, and just here. What that will do is that will give me a brighter color. Okay, so now I'll come, and I went into my dark. So remember what I said, if you go into the dark, just come in with the clean end of the brush, just pop it out. That's with the cat orange and the tangerine. Now here, this is a top edge. And this helps often if you get messy. Sometimes you have a messy float or you have a messy dry brush and you say, oh, I hate that spot. This is where a nice float will just clean that right up. You see that difference? Let's just get this little tip here because I don't like that line that's there. You see that? The same thing with the leaves and I'm not going to put a lot of green apple in because I'm pretty bright. If you want a little bit, here, yeah, we'll do a top edge. So remember, light brings the item towards us so we want the top edge. Now, a good thing to float in your dark, I'll go back to my dark green, is, my hand out of your way, is your center vein. Can you see how much darker that is? I'll add it here too, so that you can see. go through everything we did. And that did pretty good. So we started off putting a board between your shirt. And the board is for nothing more than it makes it easier to move it around. So if you're working and you want to come this way and work upside down, it makes it easier to move it. I put wax paper in between because, let me show you on this one. So when I base coated, this is the one that's done. See how the paint came through to the back? Which is normal. So what happens is the wax paper stops it from going through the shirt onto the back of the shirt. So that's why we always put wax paper down. When you're done, you just take the wax paper out and it's fine. The excess paint is on the wax paper. I base coated the leaves avocado, the stems avocado, the orange bulb, cat orange hue, and the red bulb, red pepper. I worked the same way on all my pieces. So I base coated the area. I did it with the leaves, the stems, the flower bulbs. I base coated the area, one petal at a time, one section of the leaf at a time. With the base coat color, the leaves were avocado. I pulled in my darks. Oh, let me grab my brush. I put my darks in. I put my lights in. I moved my hand to the back of the brush. 
and I blend in. Okay, I tend to go back and forth, but it doesn't matter. Constantly wiping on my paper towel. Okay, constantly. I don't wash the brush too much, but I constantly wash my paper towel. I came in, I did the same thing on my bulbs. I always work from the back out. So I started with this leaf, I started with this leaf, I did the stems, I did this leaf, I did back petal, then the front petals. I did the back petals, then the front petal, okay? This orange tulip is closer to us because it's lighter. Then I came in with my dry brush. Picked up a scant amount of paint, wiped it on my paper towel, and on the side of the brush, I just scrubbed in some of my lights. Anywhere I wanted to pop up. But remember, don't go the whole length that we put the light in when we were blending. We just want to pop up some areas, okay? Then we looked at our piece, and if we needed to, we dry brush some darken. We'll look at our piece, and we'll see where we need to pop up. So then I took my 14 short flat, uh, my 14 chisel blender, and we'll come in and we'll float. Now, just remember, your piece does not have to be the same. So I added some dark here. You might not need dark. So look at your piece and make your decision. I put some dark here. I didn't put any dark here. This is from blending. I added some lights. Here I added light. I didn't add any light here. and I just did the separations on the door. Same thing here. I did the separations. I did outside the stem, which is a separation. And then I floated the center vein because sometimes it just blends into the base coat as we're going. Okay. So that's what I did for that. Okay. So remember, then what you'll do is you'll unclip, you'll take your wax paper out, you'll take your cardboard out. They do sell in the store. They sell t-shirt forms. I find anything is easy. If you use a t-shirt form, I believe they used to, I haven't used one in years, but they used to come with a waxed covering. If they come with a waxed covering, then you don't need to put wax paper down. But I do things as simple as possible. We used, remember what we used? We used DecoArts So Soft Paint. We used an eight filbert wave. We used a 14 chisel blender. And we used, what is this? An eight flat. Okay, that's what, those are the brushes and that's the paint. If you don't have so soft paint, use fabric medium and mix it into your regular acrylic paints. All right. I hope that you so enjoyed that. Take this piece, paint it on any part of your wardrobe, paint it on home decor, be it on a pillow, a tote bag would be a lot of fun. Then you can add stencils, you can add embellishments, you can add your name. There's so much you can do. So I hope you had a wonderful time. Thanks for coming and spending your time with me. Have a good night.